Hey folks, how's it going? Mr. Mitchell here. In this video, I'm going to go over two worked examples showing you how to analyse graphs in advanced higher physics. So we're going to be doing things like error bars, calculating gradients and finding the uncertainties in gradients as well. If you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic and that way you'll be able to apply your knowledge of the video to this one. So let's get started. Question 1 says that a student sets out to find the internal resistance of a cell by a graphical method. A variable resistor is connected in series with a cell and varied to give different values of current in the circuit. The current and corresponding voltage across the cell is measured and a table of results given below. So we've got two sets of readings, current in milliamps and voltage in volts, and we've got one, two, three, four, five sets of readings for both. Then says the ammeter and voltmeter used in the experiment have scale reading uncertainties of plus or minus one milliamp and plus or minus 0.02 volts respectively. In part A it says plot a graph of the student's results including error bars as appropriate. So a good place to start would be to take a piece of graph paper and try the graph yourself with both your scales of current in milliamps and voltage in volts. So you're going to plot voltage on the y-axis and current on the x-axis and then try plotting your points. We're then going to add in error bars and what you should get is something that looks like this. So you'll see we've got voltage in volts on the y-axis and then current in milliamps on the x-axis. We've got our origin down here and you don't need a title but that's there anyway. And then you're going to plot your points and just ignore the red dot for now, we'll come to that in part B. And just before we talk about the line of best fit, for all the points, notice that we've added the error bars on. So we said it was plus or minus one milliamp for the current, so you'll see that these error bars on the x-axis, the horizontal error bars, are going to be one box width because that is one milliamps. So that is one box there, that is one box there, one box there, one box there and so on. And on the y-axis, so our vertical error bars, they should be plus or minus 0.02 volts in length. That is going to be one box width on the y-axis. So we've got one box there, one box there, one box there, one box there, and so on. So if you then add in the line of best fit, you'll see that it passes through all the error bars. So that's one of our rules when we're using the line of best fit and error bars, remember, when we're plotting graphs in advanced higher physics. And moving on to part B, it says calculate the centroid for the data and plot this on the graph. So remember to calculate the centroid, we find the average or the mean of all the x coordinates and then the average or the mean of all the y coordinates. And then we've got one set of coordinates on our graph. And that's represented by the red dot that we just saw. So our x coordinates, first of all, our mean is the sum of the measurements over n, which is adding up all our x coordinates and dividing by 5 gives us a mean of 20.7 milliamps. If we do the same for our y coordinates now, our mean is equal to the sum of measurements over n, add up our y coordinates and divide by 5, then this gives us 0.29 volts. So this gives us a centroid with an x value of 20.7 and a y value of 0.29. Now just to show you where that centroid is placed, so there's my 20.7 and 0.29 and that's it there. So the red dot and we should expect the centroid to lie on the line of best fit because remember another rule for plotting the line of best fit is that not only should it pass through all the error bars but it should also pass through the centroid. Part C then says draw the line of best fit and hence calculate the internal resistance of the cell. So remember to find the internal resistance from the higher course. When we've got a graph of voltage on the y-axis against current on the x-axis, we need to realise that the internal resistance is given by the negative of the gradient of the line of best fit. So we've already drawn our line of best fit, so we can ignore that for now. But to calculate the internal resistance, we want to find our gradient first of all. So we choose two points on the line of best fit. And in this case, I've chosen my first coordinates to be 5 times 10 to the minus 3 and 0.42 and 35 times 10 to the minus 3 and 0.18. Feel free to rewind the video just to check that those points are on the line of best fit. But you can use whatever values that you've got on your line of best fit. And then we can say the negative of the internal resistance is equal to the gradient. So we've got minus r equals m, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And then substituting in my numbers, so I get 0.18 minus 0.18. 0.42 divided by 35 times 10 to the minus 3 minus 5 times 10 to the minus 3 which gives us an answer of minus 8 but notice we've got minus r equals minus 8 so this gives us an internal resistance r of 8 ohms. Part D then says to draw lines with the maximum and minimum gradient and hence determine the uncertainty in the value for the internal resistance of the cell. So remember that our maximum and minimum gradients need to pass through all the error bars and also the centroid just like the line of best fit does. So for the maximum gradient, we have this one here, and you'll see it's passing through all the error bars and also the centroid. And it's going from this error bar up here to this error bar down here. 
And then for our minimum gradient, we have this line. So you'll see now it's going from the bottom of this one here to the top of this one over here. And notice again that this dashed line is passing through all the error bars and also the centroid. I'm then going to label these with A, B, C and D, just so it makes our calculation a bit easier. So we then want to choose two points on the dashed line AD first of all, our first diagonal. And if we do that, the first coordinates I've chosen are 7 times 10 to the minus 3 and 0 0.42. But remember, you can choose whatever points are on your line. And we've got x2, y2 is 36 times 10 to the minus 3 and 0 0.16. So to find the maximum gradient or the maximum internal resistance, first of all, we have minus r max equals m max, which is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And then plugging in our numbers for these coordinates, we get an answer of minus 9.0. But remember, we've got minus r max over here. That will give us an answer of r max equals 9.0 ohms. Doing the same now for the minimum gradient, we have two points on the dash line CB this time. You can choose any two points that are either end of your dash line for CB and in this case I've chosen points of 12 times 10 to the minus 3 and 0 0.36 and 37 times 10 to the minus 3 and 0 0.18. So we do the same as before to find the minimum gradient or the minimum internal resistance, which is minus R min equals M min equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, which plugging in the numbers from here gives us minus 7.2. So this gives us an answer of R min equals 7.2 ohms. So we've got that our internal resistance can take a minimum value of 7.2 ohms and a maximum value of 9.0 ohms. And lastly, to find the uncertainty in our internal resistance R, we take our maximum R minus our minimum R over 2, or the maximum gradient minus the minimum gradient over 2, which is R max minus R min over 2, gives us 9.0 minus 7.2 divided by 2, which equals plus or minus 0 0.9 ohms. So that's us found both the internal resistance, which was 8 ohms, plus the uncertainty in the internal resistance, which is plus or minus 0 0.9 ohms. If you wanted to, you could write that down in absolute form at the end. Question 2 says a student investigates the relationship between the force exerted on a wire in a magnetic field and the current in the wire. To achieve this, the student sets up the apparatus shown below. So you've got a top pan Newton balance, you've got a permanent magnet over here, a copper wire over here passing just above the permanent magnet, and you've got a stand there, a clamp stand, and you've got wires going into an ammeter and a power supply. Then says the wire is placed at 90 degrees to the magnetic field. The current is measured by the ammeter, where the uncertainty in the current is plus or minus 3%, and the downward force produced by the magnetic field around the wire is measured by a balance calibrated to read in newtons, where the uncertainty in the force is plus or minus 5%. With the power supply switched off, the student sets the balance to zero. The current is then varied and the force on the balance measured. The results are recorded in the table below. So we have these sets of results, current in amps and force in millinewtons, and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six sets of readings. Then says that a graph of the results is shown below with error bars included. So that's already been done for us, unlike in question one. We don't have to draw a graph here, we're given it in the question. We've got our points here. Notice that some of the points have different sized error bars. So notice that this one and this one don't have any error bars, but these ones do have error bars. And it then says the force in the balance and the current in the copper wire are linked by the formula F equals ILB, where L is the length of wire in the magnetic field and B is the magnetic induction of the permanent magnet. A part one says to calculate the gradient of the line. So quite simply, to calculate the gradient, we need to choose two points at either end of the line and do our difference in y over difference in x. So if we do that, I've chosen the point 0 0.4 and 7 times 10 to the minus 3 and 0 0.1 and 1.8 times 10 to the minus 3. But you don't have to choose those two points, you can choose whatever two points are reasonable as long as they lie on the line. And if we then do our gradient is equal to the difference in y over the difference in x, plugging in our numbers there, we get an answer of 17.3 times 10 to the minus 3 newtons per ampere. Part 2 says to state what the gradient is equivalent to. So we're going to need to compare our equation f equals ILB, which we're given in the equation, to our equation for a straight line, y equals mx plus c. And if we do that, because we've plotted force on the y-axis of our graph, that means that our quantity y is given by the force f. And because we've plotted the current i on the x-axis, that means our quantity x is current i. And our straight line does not pass through the y-axis, so our y-axis intercept c is equal to zero in this case. So comparing these values here, we know that our gradient is going to be the difference in y over the difference in x, or just y over x in this case, which gives us f over i. So if we rearrange this to give us our gradient of f over i, we're left with b times l or l times b, whichever way you want to write it. So our gradient is equal to b times l. Part 3 says the wire within the magnetic field has a length of 0.060 metres. Calculate the value of the magnetic induction, 
Well, we're just going to use the relationship that we've just worked out for the gradient. And we've also got a value for the gradient. So we're trying to work out what the magnetic induction with the symbol B is. We know that the length L is 0.060 meters in this case, and our gradient from before was 17.3 times 10 to the minus 3 newtons per ampere. So plugging this into our relationship gradient equals B times L, we have rearranging for B, B equals gradient over L, which gives us plugging in the numbers 17.3 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 0.060 which gives a final answer of 0.29 Tesla. Part B now says use the parallelogram method to determine the uncertainty in the gradient of the graph. So remember to do this, we want to form a parallelogram and we're gonna do this by passing parallel lines through either side of our best fit straight line. So my upper straight line is gonna pass through my furthest away point from the line above it, which is gonna be this point here. So if we do that, we get this line here. And for my lower parallel line below the line of best fit, it's got to pass through the point which is furthest away from the line this side of the line so that's going to be this point over here and if I do that I get this line here so joining it vertically over here and over here and you'll notice we've formed a parallelogram here so I'm just going to label each corner of it to make things easier for later so we've got A down here B over here, C over here, and D over here. And now to calculate our uncertainty in the gradient, we want to think about our diagonals now. So we've got CB from here to here, and we've got AD from here to here. So let's do that. So choosing two points on the diagonal CB, first of all, to find its gradient, we have two points. So we've got 0.02 and 0.1 times 10 to the minus 3, and 0.5 and 9.3 times 10 to the minus 3. So you can choose whatever two points are on that diagonal line. And plugging this into our gradient equation, we have the gradient of CB is equal to the change in Y over the change in X, which gives us this thing here. And if we plug these numbers in, we get 0.019. Doing the same now for diagonal AD, so choosing two points to find its gradient, I've chosen the point 0.02, 1.0 times 10 to the minus 3, and 0.5 and 8.4 times 10 to the minus 3. So same as before, finding the gradient now in the diagonal AD, we get the change in Y over the change in X, which gives us this sum here. So if you plug that into your calculator, you should get 0.015. And lastly, now that we know the gradients for our two diagonals in our parallelogram, we can write down this relationship. So we've got the uncertainty in the gradient is equal to the uncertainty in the diagonal CB, minus the uncertainty in the diagonal AD divided by 2 times the square root of n minus 2. And this is equal to 0 0.019 minus 0 0.015 over 2 root 6 minus 2, because remember we've got 6 data points in this case, 6 data points on our graph, which is equal to plus or minus 1 times 10 to the minus 3 newtons per ampere. That's all from me guys, I hope you found the video useful and managed to follow along there, it was quite lengthy, but hopefully that helped you put into practice what we've learned about graphical analysis. So if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.